Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brad with Fix This Build That, and today I'm doing a revised shop tour. I did my last one about a year ago. It's time to update it. I'm gonna show you all the things that have changed since then, and I'm gonna answer a lot of the questions that I got from social media asking me about different aspects of the shop. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna start on the working end of the shop. If you've not seen the shop tour from last year, I'm gonna have a link up there so you can go check it out. There'll be one in the description as well. You can go see what I had last year versus what I have this year. I'm only gonna talk about really the new things. I'll go into some things, uh, but you'll wanna check that out if you wanna see some details about the things you don't hear about today. So this is it. It is a garage. I am in a garage shop just like most of you guys out there, but I do have the luxury of having a deep garage. So this is 31 feet deep. 19 inches wide so it is about it's a two-car garage extra deep so i got a lot of great space but i'm only using about the back two-thirds of it i'll show you the other side here in just a minute but that's the size of the garage just to get you level set then the one nice thing i do have is 11 foot ceilings so that is a huge plus just like last year i'm going to start in the center of the shop uh, and I'm gonna talk about the things that have changed. So this is probably one of the biggest changes that I've had is this uh, assembly table. So I used to have the folding saw, ho saw horses and I would put a melamine sheet over the top and it worked, but this is a lot nicer. Uh, this is a clamping table that was sent to me by Armor Tool. And I really like the overhang. The base is actually pretty narrow for what it is. So it's really a nice combination of small form factor, but it's got a lot of nice clamping around the sides and obviously all the dog holes. Also is mobile so I can just unlock it has some locking casters here and then move this out of the way uh, if I need to do something big like assemble a huge bed day bed for my daughter which I did this year all right let's get started on the back wall and this is where I have a lot of storage and I'm gonna show you some things that I have changed because there have been some big changes since last year uh, any of these projects that I have built, that I have plans for, there'll be a link down below in the description to all the plans. I also have a blog post that'll detail everything and have links to all the plans. So if you want to build something for your own shop, you can do that as well. All right, so the biggest change has been this bad boy right here. This is my DIY base cabinet and it has transformed what I had over here. I used to have a little table. I was actually a little pallet wood table and I've been posting about that on social media that I had a tarp over. This is so much better. Um, it's got doors and drawers, and then on the outside, I've got some storage pull-out trays that I use. So you can go check the video for that. I have a whole build video as well. Um, but this has been great for long-term storage, for mid to long-term storage for some of the things I don't use a ton. But also in the drawers, this is where I keep all my screws. So I've got everything that I need for my projects right here. Uh, nice and easy, accessible, and stored out of the way when I don't need it. In this next drawer, I have my air nailer. So I've got a lot of brad nailers, pin nailers, staplers, things like that in there. And then in the bottom drawer, uh, just an assortment of different cordless hand tools and some corded hand tools in here as well. My cordless drill charging station and my tool storage wall cabinet. Those are both the same as last year. I have plans for both of those. Those are actually free plans if you want to go check those out. Uh, this over here is actually my sheet good storage for my off cuts that aren't full sheets or even half sheets. And that's something I'm probably going to address in the near future because it's kind of a mess just stacked up against here. And actually, I moved a lot of stuff and <laughs> this is better than it was. But I'm going to definitely be addressing that here uh, in the next several months. One of the big questions I got on social media was how I heat the shop. Now, I'm in Tennessee. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, so we don't need a ton of heat. Uh, but all I do is I just use this enclosed uh, oil-based radiant heater. So it's nothing fancy. I think it's like 40 bucks uh, at the Home Depot and you go pick one up and this will raise my shop about 10 degrees. Uh, I have to let it run for a while if I just throw it on high, but it gives a nice radiant heat. But this is all I use, but I've got great insulation around the shop as well. So that makes it a little bit easier. All right, spinning around to the far wall. This is the wall where all my power is. So I got a lot of questions about electrical and I'll kind of talk to that as I go down the wall. Uh, but this is basically where all my machine tools are along this wall. The biggest change uh, from these tools here is this guy right here. So this is the Jet 1836 drum sander and uh, I switched out this. I had in the last video, I had the Supermax 1938. I switched to this. The biggest reason I switched to this is because of this right here. So this is their new and improved baffle. This is a plastic baffle, uh, but what you can see under here, and if you can see it in the light, there is a little baffle, and because this is plastic and not metal, they can put this in here. 
And basically what this baffle does is it isolates the dust collection to where you need it. So all this is now dead to the airflow and it picks up a ton more dust off this head. So that's why I love it. This Jet 1836 uh, has been awesome and I really enjoyed having it in the shop. Now, most of you guys know my flip top tool stand, uh, but it's worth showing and mentioning. On the top here, I have my rigid oscillating spindle sander, and this is great for doing curves and all that. Really enjoy this tool. But if I flip it over, I've got my rigid 13 inch lunchbox bench top planer. Uh, I'm still rocking this thing and it is still working great. So this is what I use uh, for all my boards and it's still working out awesome. So the flip top tool stand, there are plans available, link down below in the description if you're interested in making one. This is a great space saving tool for the shop. All right, this workflow has changed around a bit since the last time I had. Uh, basically those were the same, the machine switched out. Still have my router table here, not gonna go into it. It's just a, a basic router table. I want to actually change out the top at a minimum uh, if not the whole thing, because it's a little bit dished out, the phenolic top now. Um, but what I have, this power here, so you see my power, I'm gonna go down the wall again, but there's a 110, and then this is also a 110. I'm gonna say 110 and 220, uh, whatever, 115, 230, 120, 240, whatever it is these days. But uh, these are alternating circuits. So this one over here and this one are both on different circuits, so that way I won't overload one individual circuit if I was trying to plug a bunch of stuff in in one location. Also, I have a blank plate right here. This is for a 220 volt circuit. Um, I don't have any 220 tools over here at the moment, but if I did, I could undo that one, put a plug in there, and I'd be good to go. Well, so this was the other big change. I moved the bandsaw. The bandsaw used to be behind my table saw, and it is now here. And the reason for that is because of my new dust collector, which I'll show you when we get down here. Uh, but the bandsaw, same thing, drill press, just this little jobby here. Um, it's starting to limit me a bit, so I'll probably be upgrading this this year. And, uh, you know, these are still working good. I like kind of the workflow. I can keep these on the wall, move them out if I need to. These two, not so much, but the router table, flip top, and the sander, I definitely move those out when I'm using them uh, just to get better access. And then I'll bring over the assembly table for like outfeed or just staging materials and things like that. All right, working our way down the wall. This is a lot of stuff going on here. I uh, didn't mention over here, there is a live 220 here as well. I used to run my joiner off of that and I've since relocated the joiner uh, and got a larger extension cord for that. Uh, but this is my French cleat wall where I keep my clamp rack. Uh, there's some things that I wrote about in my French cleat storage blog. You can go check that out. Uh, but I really enjoy this. I've not moved it as you can tell if you look at the one from last year because it's working out really well. I like how it's, how it's set up. The biggest addition was uh, something I just built, uh, was my last major project, was the table saw cabinet. And this guy is working out really well. I am really enjoying it. I'll show you a little bit about how I'm using it uh, and I'll give you a close up here. So this has got the storage drawers uh, that I showed on the video, uh, but basically this is where I keep my blades, my blade storage, my push sticks uh, in this little vertical sliding storage. And then everything else that I need for the table saw in these five different drawers. And then on the right side of my sliding drawer is where I have my dado material. So this is kind of uh, my general purpose, table saw blades and all that good stuff. And then over on the right side, my dado blades and some of my other things that are specialty, if you will. And then I keep my table saw sled over there, my cross cut sled over on the other side of it. Now here's one thing that I did not plan on, but it actually works out really nicely as I'm using this table saw cabinet. Uh, the past couple of weeks is that I can take my fence from my table saw. If I want to take it off, because if I'm going to use my crosscut sled, uh, I can take this off and put the fence right on top of the table saw cabinet, which is pretty sweet. And then it's below that. So if I have, if I'm cross cutting something and it's kicking out here to the side, that is below it. So it sits down right there. Kind of a nice little addition I didn't really think about, but it works great. All right, this is a little nook behind my table saw. Uh, I don't go back here very often, as you can tell, uh, but this is the sub panel. So this is running all the circuits that are coming down this wall and that wall and uh, nothing else. So all the lighting and everything else is actually off my main panel. So this sub panel is dedicated just literally to this wall and it runs all my tools. Um, so I have uh, three 110 circuits in here and I actually have four 220 because each of the 220s has its own circuit. 
Uh, I have one for the table saw because this is a five horsepower table saw. It takes a 30 amp 220 um, breaker and then all the other 220s are 20 amp and I have uh, three of those. I have one down this way and two down that way. Uh, same thing on the 110, I've got two circuits going down this way and one coming back this way. And those are all GFCI protected and you know, check your local codes and all that and, and work with somebody who can uh, make sure that you're doing all the right things from an electrical perspective. I am not an expert. So this is the back side of the shop. Again, I still need lighting. I, I said I was gonna do something about the lighting. I have not yet. Uh, this is a better look at that dust collector I was talking about. This is the Jet 2 horsepower uh, Cyclone dust collector and it is really nice because it's got the barrel down there. So emptying the barrel is a lot easier than pulling the bag off uh, of that old single stage I had. So this has been really nice. It's also on remote control, which is very nice. So I have the remote sitting actually right in front of the, the drill press over there because I mainly use it when I'm doing the table saw. I'll show you guys what I do for the tubing because that was another big question was what do I do for dust collection? I'll show you that in here in just a minute, but that is a mess. I, that is another thing that I want to focus on this year is dust collection and getting some hard piping because right now, as you can see on this, I just have the blue flex tube and that's not great. And turning over here to the side, I don't think I even showed this last time. This is uh, my full spectrum hobby laser. So this is a CNC laser. Don't do a ton of stuff with it, but I do some engraving and some cutting and things on it. Um, again, I wanna use this a little bit more this year because it's a cool machine and I've not utilized it as much as I would like to. Uh, over here is just a bunch of gardening stuff that I have for outside and the rest of this part over in the shop is some other places that aren't woodworking. So I definitely share this space with, you know, normal garage stuff as well. All right, now we're coming back around the shop here and, and this is still a mess, but man, we just emptied a bunch of stuff from behind here. Uh, but this has been another great addition to the shop this year is my lathe stand as well as the new lathe. So I upgraded the lathe. This is a Jet 1221 variable speed lathe. If you've not seen my six days of wood turning, go check that out if you're thinking about getting into wood turning. Uh, but I also made this base for it, this mobile base. This is all mobile, like I like everything. And I don't turn here. I actually take this over there into the center of the shop and that's where I turn just because the lighting's better and I can get to my dust collection easier that way. So I store it here when it's not in use, thus the mobile, which works out great. Um, and I did put some hardware on there, uh, but all the doors and, or the drawers and the door down there works out really nicely and have everything confined for when I'm doing my turning. So moving back over here, same setup as I had last year. I've got the joiner here and I've got my wood storage cart here. This really works out well because I get so much room for my joiner and I can move the lathe out of the way if I need to and basically have you know, full 16 feet if I would ever need to join anything that long. So this is a great spot for my joiner uh, and it's been working out really well for me. And of course, we all know about the wood situation, so I'm not even gonna get into that. Uh, but if you did go back to the last video, you'll see a lot of the same boards that were here last year uh, because I'm a wood hoarder and that's what I do. So this is still my mobile storage station working well. The off cuts, I have not plowed through hardly any of these. Um, I do want to address this because it's, it's just too much and I will be doing something with this this year, whether I downsize or I just relocate or whatever, because I want to reclaim this, this space here because I don't need all this. And I think I could move some things around and make better use of the space. All right, so now looking back into the shop, you can kind of see this is the working area. Similar to last year, except now this is more of a uh, fixture in the shop here versus what I had that was kind of breakdown. So it's starting to get a little more crowded. Uh, I do like open spaces, so I don't have everything slammed in here and I'm not as efficient as I could be as far as stacking in machines because I just like to have this open space and that's just what I like. Uh, so as I look through here, I'm gonna swing through here really quickly because not anything has, not much has changed over here, uh, but it is still, again, a work in progress and this is probably the part that I'll attack because I spent a lot of time over here on this last year. Time to go to this side of the garage, this side of the shop. So I still have these bank of cabinets over here and I did move some of that over to the base cabinet as I made the base cabinet. Uh, so I've emptied a bit of that out, which I can get rid of. I have my mobile miter saw station, which you'll see a ton in my video. I'm over here making these cuts. I like how it's positioned. I can pull the wings up. Um, the bandsaw, this is an extra bandsaw. You, so you saw I had the bandsaw over there. That is my resaw bandsaw. This is my smaller use bandsaw. I have all my wood storage up here again uh, that I'm not really gonna get into. And then just a lot of long-term storage back here. And if you wanna go see more about that, check the other video because honestly nothing has changed. So I'm not gonna go through that 
again. Um, but yeah, this whole area, I, I think I can use it a little bit better. I'd love to know, like, what do you think in the, in the comments about this? What would you do with this area? Would you move a workbench in? Because that's something I was thinking about. Maybe having a hand tool workbench here and assembly table and then a workbench. Not sure if I really need that. It might be overkill. But then again, maybe not. Maybe this could be really nice. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. All right, so this, of course, you guys know, this is the mobile miter saw station. I use this in almost every project. Uh, it's got the nice folding wings here so I can pull it up uh, when I need to make longer cuts and I've got the support. I have the Craig T-Track on top with the adjustable fences. I have the vacuum down below. Uh, still loving this, it is a great addition. On top, I have my 12 inch fixed base. So this is not a slider, fixed base rigid miter saw. Works really well for me. Um, I'm really digging this setup. And you can get plans for this down below if you want to build your own. One of the other questions that came up quite a bit was about these anti-fatigue floor mats. So these are just these interlocking, I think they're two feet by two feet, they might be 18 by 18. Uh, but anyway, I have these in front of the table saw. I also have a few behind the uh, assembly table here. So when I'm shooting and doing things there, and then I have a full layout, which you see uh, in those last few shots right around the miter saw, as well as uh, the other bench. Um, so people ask like, do these actually work? Uh, I think they do because I don't get a lot of back problems standing around. I'm in the shop a lot, uh, but they could be better. And somebody else asked, do they get sucked up when you're vacuuming? Yes, they do. It's a pain in the butt. These are pretty lightweight, uh, but they're locking in. I think these were the Rockler ones. I think Harbor Freight also has some. They're only about three eighths of an inch thick, so they're not very thick. Uh, I am thinking about upgrading to some of the rubberized ones, the thick rubber ones, uh, and getting those around here, and they're all black. Uh, but since I have everything mobile, I think I would have to go all the way to the wall and then put everything on top of them. Whereas right now I just have them set in place. So I'm not sure about that one. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys like the rubber mats? Because these are okay and they work great and I can switch them in and out. But the rubber mats seem like kind of a commitment. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And just so you know what it looks like and the reason that I really need to attack the dust collection piping I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I actually switch out and I use my table saw and then I use my band saw. I'm a little embarrassed to show this, but I'm gonna do it just for you guys. <laughs> this is what it looks like. So there it is, big blue hose running through my shop. Not convenient, not necessarily even that safe. Uh, so I need to adjust it. What I want to do is actually hard pipe the table saw coming out of the dust collector into the back and then run along that back wall, run my dust collection piping, and hopefully that will take care of this. Uh, but yeah, this is what you don't see in the videos that I do, and I use my single point dust collection instead of having blast gates. I need to upgrade it. So the other part of my dust collection that I don't show a lot and I don't talk about is the air filtration. So this is a Powermatic PM1200. This is a great unit, and I got this this year um, as I started working with Jet and Powermatic. It is really nice because it does 1200 CFM and you can put it on a timer. It will circulate through the shop and clean the shop out. I usually have that running. Um, anytime that I'm running any of my tools, I will have that running. I'll cut it off when I'm recording because it's a bit loud as far as ambient noise, um, but I will run that. I will also put it on an hour timer before I leave the shop so that it cleans the air before I leave uh, or after I leave. And then the next day when I come in, I know everything is clean and it also helps with dust buildup around the shop. So one thing I didn't talk about was the shop stool. I love the shop stool. I can sit down and do some planning at this table if I want to. Uh, also, another thing I wanted to mention, if you've seen this hat, this is my buddy, John Malecki, his hat, metal and wood, custom furniture, go check him out. But we run a podcast, if you've not heard about it, it is called Made for Profit. Go check it out, I'll link it down below in the description. And it is all about monetizing as a maker and about running your business, whether it's a side hustle, whether you do content or product. Uh, if you're interested in making money at all with anything related to woodworking or anything handmade, go check it out. I think it'll be a great resource for you as you're growing your business. That's it guys, it's a shop tour update for 2017. Maybe I'll have another one before the end of the year. Let me know what you didn't see. Let's carry on the conversation down below in the comments. You can ask me questions. I will answer all of them down there. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.